My name is Maya Tudor, and I'm a professor of politics and public policy at the Blavatnik School of Government. I'm also a fellow at St. Hilda's College, and those are both at the University of Oxford. I'm broadly speaking a political scientist who compares countries, and uh, I'm primarily working right now on the relationship between nationalism and democracy. My recent book with Harris Milonis is a book called Varieties of Nationalism that tackles one important question and makes one big argument. So I'll take those in turn. The, the problem that we're broadly speaking trying to address is the, the fact that scholars of nationalism don't actually use a shared definition of nationalism, and they aren't even necessarily practiced at making clear what their definition of the nation and nationalism is. And that's, you know, hugely problematic. Few can imagine for anything that people are working on, you know, even things when we talk about democracy in the public sphere. Well, what does democracy mean to you? You have to be clear about what this concept actually means. And, and that's, that problem is an even bigger problem because the study of nationalism is spread over a lot of different scholarly fields. So unlike the study of war, which mostly political scientists look at, the study of nationalism is a question that's looked at by political scientists, but also sociologists, uh, historians, psychologists, uh, anthropologists, even evolutionary biologists look at the question of nationalism. And so that's a problem for the study of nationalism because nationalism is split across a lot of fields and it's really not clear what we mean by the idea. And as a kind of immigrant to the study of nationalism myself, I wanted to lay out uh, what the nature of this debate was and suggest a way forward, which is not that we need to have one understanding of the nation but that scholars need to be very clear about what they mean by the term nationalism. So that's the, that's the problem we're trying to solve. We also make uh, an, a big argument in the book, and that argument is that most of the current debates and scholarship around nationalism addresses three big questions. The first question is, does a nation even exist? So we say that nationalism has to, is, in our definition, defined by a sense of community, an intersubjective sense of community, but also a desire on some part of the population or the, um, or the elite, some substantial part, for full political sovereignty. And so starting from that definition, we say, doesn't the, fir the first question we ought to ask uh, that scholars are asking is, does a nation actually exist? So to some degree, uh, in some context and some time, though there is an identity, um, there, it, there isn't a full drive for sovereignty. Um, that would be, for example, today, you know, Bavaria and Germany. You know, it was it, it certainly has a unique political identity and a sense of awareness of that identity, but there's no substantial part of the Bavarian elite or the B Bavarian public in Germany that is pushing for full political sovereignty. Uh, yeah. Elites, of course, can be divided or coherent, so can publics. So these are some of the ways that scholarship is looking at that first question of does a nation exist? The second question we ask is, is, or we say that most scholarship asks well, one of these three questions. And the second question is, how is the nation defined? So is it defined by more kind of fixed social identities like race, in some contexts, religion? Or is it more defined by things like ideas and creeds and a shared history? And that kind of spectrum is, we argue, a much more helpful way of thinking about nationalism than this idea of civic versus ethnic, which leads one to believe there are only two kinds of nationalism, and actually there, there are many kinds of nationalism, but they vary along this dimension of ascriptiveness. 
Another way, for example, that nations uh, differ is whether they are highly articulated. So when I say to you, what does it mean to be a member of your nation? How many things can you point to? Can you point to a shared language? Can you point to a shared set of national heroes or myths? And the more of those things that you have, the thicker your national identity. So there are kind of two ways in which um, the nation is defined or two dimensions along which the nation can be defined. And then a third question that lots of scholars of nationalism are working on is how relevant is the nation? We just went through a period of the Olympics this summer being celebrated and watched all over the world. And one thing that scholars have shown more broadly is that when you have periods where national uh, teams are doing well in international sports events, such as the Olympics or the World Cup, that the salience of your national identity rises relative to many other identities that each individual possesses. So these three questions, does a nation exist? How is a nation defined? And how relevant is the nation to your national identity? Those are some of the questions that this book looks at and tries to bring together in one coherent conversation. I'm currently working on a book that looks at the relationship between nationalism as it emerged and changed over time uh, and its relationship to democracy in the four major countries of South Asia, that's India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh. And we're looking at over time, how how is the nation defined and how is it mobilized by politicians at particular moments in the country's history and how does that affect uh, the kind of core attributes of democracy. So that's a book that I'm uh, now just diving into and I'm, I'm really excited to be working on it. This was a hard question. And I ultimately settled on the idea that it's increasingly possible today to make arguments about ideas and about identities and how they matter to outcomes, outcomes uh, that are really wide ranging, but that in my case is around, uh, you know, the rights to um, the, the right to live in a country where the government is responsive to your needs. I think when I first entered the field, so, you know, I, when I graduated from university 20 years ago, the idea, I had studied economics and ideas of rational choice and this kind of individual who thought about every decision through the lens of rational choice really dominated many of the social sciences. And as I went to graduate school and, and as I myself began working as an academic, the fields began to be more embracing of the idea that ideas matter in and of themselves. So who are you and who is your tribe? And questions like that matter for politics and help explain a broad range of political outcomes we observe in the world from the advent of genocide to the presence of uh, of of democracy to um the the voters who vote for trump though it's not in their economic interests as such so thinking about how ideas and how narratives matter to individuals and to societies, I think that's a really exciting field in political science and in other parts of social science. Well, I know it's a really exciting place to bring together scholars who are working on cultural aspects of political life, of social life, um, and religious aspects and the ways in which those identities get uh, mobilized politically and matter to the world that we observe. And it's really a, a leading center for bringing together thinking on such questions. So I'm really excited to be there this year.